247.
participated in CTS yesterday, uh, the state convention in Farmington. Would you stand to your feet, those that are here with us today? You can be proud of these young kids and also the uh, uh, Brittenham uh, young ladies. Uh, let's give them a nice hand. They did a wonderful job. You can be seated. Um, 20 entries out of the 20, 15 are going to nationals. So I think that's great. And Mickey, did you have anything you want to say? Sure. <laughs> Should I sit down? Sure. <laughs> uh, these kids, oh my goodness. They are amazing. And all of the kids, we didn't get to hear everybody from all the other churches, but we did get in on a few of things, a few things. And all the kids who participated this year, not just from our own church, but across the state, did really well. The Free Will Baptist denomination as a whole should be really encouraged by these kids that are coming up because these kids are learning things now that are only going to better them as adults as they go on and become the leaders of our church. And Scott, your message last Sunday night was fabulous. And Allie had a question yesterday in Bible Tic-Tac-Toe that you specifically addressed last Sunday night about Mount Moriah and Isaac and what that how that relates to Jesus. And she got the answer right. She got her point. So <laughs> kudos to you. Um, but I'm really proud of these kids and the adults that have helped. The parents have done an amazing amount of work. Um, helping them get prepared. We had a short amount of time to do that this year. And I can't wait to see what they do at the national competition. And I honestly don't know who was more tired at the end of the day yesterday, the kids or the adults. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Macy says the kids, but all the adults were dragging this morning. So thank you very much for your love and your support. The prayers were definitely appreciated. And we do have some things that we are going to be asking you to help us with in the next couple of months. So be prepared. Bertie, we needed you yesterday. The gentleman introducing the girls had a hard time pronouncing Brittenham. And I told Michael, I said, I wish your mother was here. He could, she could help out. <laughs> had trouble with Macy's name, too. They called her Macy Green. And she... I had no issues correcting him. I know. <laughs> anyway, we had, a, we had a great time. Andy, would you, where'd you, Andy, would you come here for just a second, please? Andy's the, the lone young man out of all those girls, and it's okay, I'm not going to, yeah, it's okay. What are you looking forward to, uh, to going to nationals? Oh, uh, the barbecue. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lee, I was looking for a spiritual answer there, and I didn't get it. Well, let's sing page 104, 104, the old gospel ship. <laughs> I have good news to bring, and that is why I sing all my joys with you and I'll share. I'm going to take a trip in the old gospel ship and go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond. 
Jack Henderson, would you stand? Do you have a special for us this morning? You're dressed. Stand up. I want everybody to see you. I'm hurt. Looking good. <laughs> Looks like you may be ready to get married. <laughs> Well, they have heard me say it, but I haven't said it directly to them. But kids, I'm proud of you for what you did yesterday. And I'm glad, too, that's not just games that they go to because they're working with the Word of God and learning the Word of God and sharing the Word of God. And I think that's good. I think, I think that's very good. All right, I'm... A, in front of some of you and behind some of you. Let me back up a little bit because I'm going to really lay it on the ashes here this morning. <laughs> well, I told Darlene this message the Lord laid on my heart this morning. <laughs> a little bit difficult. Not that I'm going to make anybody mad any more than usual, but uh, got a lot I want to say and... and, and it's fitting right in with our Sunday school lesson and, and uh, some of the songs and comments that have been made. Second Corinthians, if you have your Bibles, if you would, please. I want to give a title to my message this morning, Christian Character and Consecration Through the Church. I want to talk about the church this morning. I want to talk about you as a part of the church this morning. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Have you found it? All right. Verse 11, verse 11. Paul says, O ye Corinthians, and we can put in there, O ye Macedonians, uh, or O you Christians, our mouth is not, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart's enlarged. In other words, Paul's saying, my, my heart's big enough to receive you. You are not straightened or confined in us, but you're straightened in your own bowels. You, my heart's enlarged to receive you, but you're, you're, you're sort of being restrictive here. Now, for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. In other words, be willing to take me in, to take others in. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, or Satan? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. For as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Almighty." And going right on into chapter 7, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let's bow together and, and ask the Lord for his blessings on the service again and that I'd be able to say what he wants me to say this morning. Brother Rex, would you pray for us? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this another a day that we can come to serve thee, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what has been said, the songs that have been sung, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you be with us in the remainder of this service, Father. We pray that you will, will be with the Lee, Lord, and, and bless the reading of the word that he just read to us, Father. Help us, Lord, that we might pay attention, Lord, and, and each one of us do our part, Lord, and hearken to what you would have us to do. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go back to verse 11 and... and uh, 
run through these verses pretty quickly again and then some other things I want to say. First of all, Paul said his heart was open to the church at Corinth. He was willing to accept those people, but the church's heart was closed to him. They, they were not willing uh, to hear, if we can say it that way, all that he had to tell them. And, and he wanted them to open up and receive him and others who believed. Then he told them, don't be unequally joined or yoked together. <laughs> uh, it's, it's something we think about. This verse is something we think about when we counsel people that are about to get married. Don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. But he's telling the church don't to be, not to be unequally yoked also. Uh, we could take that to mean in fellowship because we are supposed to be of the righteous and not the unrighteous. We can take that to mean in communion. And he talks about some of these things. Uh, we are light and we are not darkness. He talks about in attachment, we're Christ. We're attached to him, him and we are his. We are not Satan's and we ought not to be attached to him in any way. Uh, in faith, we are believers and not infidels, as he says in the scripture, or not unbelievers. And in worship, we ought to be attached to him. We are actually the temple of God. We're in the temple, but we are the temple because remember where God said he would dwell in us. So we're God's temple and we're not the temple of an idol. And then Paul says that we need to come out from among the unbelievers and be separate from them. Now that doesn't mean that we have to avoid everybody that's a, a non-believer. Uh, we sort of got into that in Sunday school this morning. I appreciate the, the discussion that you all uh, included in the Sunday school lesson, and Mike was teaching that lesson this morning, and that, that was good and gives us pause and something to think about. Uh, we need to be separate, not from the world in the sense that we avoid sinners because we need to witness to them, and we can't do that if we're closed in our houses all the time. Uh, but we need to be separate from their philosophy, their actions, their, their places where they go that we can't go and the things they do that we can't, can't do. So we need to be separate from them. And notice that that's not the Sunday school teacher's command. And that's not the pastor's command. And that's not the deacon's command. That's God's command. God is the one who says, come out and be separate from them. But he says, there are going to be good results if you do that. Maybe it's a little difficult sometimes, but if you do that, he says that God will receive us and get this, God will become a father to us. Isn't that all right? Children of God. We can become if we come out of, and, and do what? we're supposed to do. And then in that one verse we read from chapter 7 of 2 Corinthians, we're told to cleanse ourselves and to perfect holiness. Now, I suspect that not one of us in the house would say, I have perfected myself, and not one of us in the house would say that I'm holy. But this is a process that we need to follow. Now, how to do, how to do this? How can we do these things that Paul's talking about this morning? Well, one way uh, that uh, we can get help in doing the best that we can is to associate with a good Bible-believing church. And there are many of them, but not all churches are. I wish I didn't have to say that, but not all churches are. <laughs> and since we're a part of the Macedonia church, uh, the onus is going to fall on us this morning. We'll, we'll be thinking about ourselves. But let me point out that we are a, port, uh, a part of the larger Free Will Baptist organization. And, and so that will come into play a little bit also. But let me say this. Now, now as, a, as an aside, let me say I am a Free Will Baptist and I'm not ashamed of that. I, 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 I believe what we believe. But I always feel like I need to say that we're not in this alone. And we're not the only ones going to heaven. Amen. And we need to associate fellowship and be in unity with others who may even have a different name painted over their church house door. 
I believe that's true. Sometimes, sometimes I've thought of as not being strong enough in my denomination. <laughs> it's not my denomination that's going to get me to heaven. Now, I think if I follow its teachings, I'll get there. I believe that. But I believe also that we've got brothers in different denominations in all directions from this church in the valley that will be there as well. And I believe we need to understand that. I, I, I know you do. I know you do. Okay. We have a church covenant. How many of you have read our church covenant? Okay. My lens, hands all over. I'm glad because I was going to read it and I don't have time. <laughs> I'm glad you read the church covenant. And we'll help you find one if you don't have one. But I want, want, to, want to mention some things that I believe that the church, this church, other churches, other denominations that are basic Bible-believing churches ought to be able to help us to understand what we believe about the Holy Bible, about the Scriptures. What do you believe about it? It's a, it's, it's a book. I laid mine down here because I picked up the wrong one this morning. This is my favorite, and I picked it up, but it's fallen apart at the seams, and I don't use it anymore. There, there it is, and I laid it, I laid it down. How many of you have a Bible? How many of, it, of your Bible has what's called the Old Testament and the New Testament in it? All right. I think that's important. We believe in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and we believe that both of them were divinely inspired. That, mean God, that means God had the writers of the Old and New Testament write what they wrote, and it is His Word. <laughs> what about God Himself? What, who is God, and what about Him? We believe that God is one. Am I doing that, Michael? Okay, okay. We believe that God is one. Amen? He is omnipotent, He is omniscient, and He is omnipresent. That means He is omnipotent, He has all power. He's omniscient, He knows everything. He is omnipresent, He is everywhere at the same time. You try that. Sometimes our schedules want us to be that way, Doug, you know what? But, but God is everywhere at the same time. He is ever existing. That means he exists now. He always will, but he always has. God is eternal. He's ever existing. He's never changing. He is good. He is wise. He is holy. He is the creator. He also is the sustainer. I uh, taught school one time with a man who wanted to be like the founding fathers of our country, and he said some of them were deists, and so I think I'm a deist, he said. He said, I think I am. <laughs> they, they believed that God made things, created everything, and then just turned it loose. And he said, I think we need to control it now because God made it, and it's just there. We're, we're just flying through space. We need, we need to take charge now. <laughs> I had to tell Vic I didn't think we could do it. Don't believe we can yet. I'm a lot older than I was then, and I still don't think we can. I believe God has to sustain it. He is our Redeemer also, and God is worthy to be worshipped. <laughs> what about His government? God oversees his creation, and he does that with his wisdom and with his mercy, and I'm glad for his mercy. He gives us free choice. He gives us free choice. We can decide whether or not we are going to accept what he has for us, but he gives us the responsibility to do that right. God knows everything in the past and the present and the future. But just because he knows it does not mean that he decrees that everything that is going to happen must happen. 
He gives us the ability to choose. He just knows what we will choose. What about creation? God created the earth and everything in it. We believe that. He created angels to glorify him and, and he uses those angels that, who did not fall to carry out his judgments and his works today. He also created, created man, that's you and me, that's Adam, that's Eve. He created man in his own image. That is an honor that he gives us. He made us in his image. But man was influenced by Satan to sin and that brought damage and death into the world. And man ever since has been inclined to sin and man cannot save himself, we believe. But God made a way for him to be saved through the sacrifice of Christ. So what about Jesus Christ? What do we believe about him? He's the Son of God, and He is at one with God, and He possesses all the divine characteristics of God. He has many titles, Jesus does. He's called the Savior. He's called the Son of Man. He's called the Son of God. He's called Teacher. He's called a lot of different things. And like the Father... He's omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent. You remember those big words? He's good, he's holy, he's wise, and he is to be worshipped as well as God. He, he's the Word who made all things. Remember John in writing his gospel said, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. And, and without him was not anything made that was made. And so Jesus made all things. We just saw that God made all things. We'll get to that just in a minute here. He's the Son of Man. He's the Son of God. He, he came down from heaven to us and He became one of us so completely that He was born as a human baby. He took our form on Himself. And although He was sinless, he was made sin for us and he bore our burdens to the cross. What about his atonement? No. Sin can't be pardoned without a sacrifice. And animal sacrifices which were used in ancient times, animal sacrifices can't wash sin away. So Jesus gave himself as the ultimate sacrifice and thereby atoned for our sins. He also is our mediator, our go-between. He not only died for us, but he rose again and he went back to heaven where he's the only mediator, intercessor, go-between between God and man and where he makes intercession for us today. And then while we're there, let's mention the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit exists. He is one with God. He's one with the Father. He's one with Christ. So the three in one are one God. Can you get your mind around that? There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You say, that's three. That is three. But they are one. One God. We believe in one God. Three persons of that one God. <laughs> what about the gospel call... The word tells us, we, we read Paul's writing in Romans where he says, all of sin come short of the glory of God. Well, all have sinned. But all are invited to come to the Lord and any who do not come to him are 
solely responsible for their lostness, if that is a word. And you understand what I'm saying. We are responsible for our being lost if we do not come to Christ because all are invited, whosoever will. We need to understand that completely. What's repentance? God requires repentance when we come to Him. That includes conviction of our sins. That includes being sorry. That includes confession. And the fruit of all that is obedience. <laughs> we need to be obedient to God. <clears throat> regeneration. What's regeneration? That's being made new. That's what the word means, of course. Spiritual regeneration, we believe, happens instantly. It's an immediate thing. The sinner who is repenting receives new life and becomes a child of the king and begins to serve him. And he is regenerated, he is saved at once. Justification. A lot of big spiritual words this morning. Swallow them all. Justification implies that we have been guilty before God, but by Christ's sacrifice and atonement, we are accepted by God, by faith, and we have been forgiven of all the guilt and sin and restored to favor with God. That's justification. What's sanctification? We believe sanctification is a continuing growth that the... The, the Christian experiences a gross growth in grace through the years of life and a gross growth in the knowledge of our Lord and our Savior. Sanctification is a process, if you will. Got to mention this one. What do we think about the perseverance of the saints? Brother, there are strong grounds strong grounds to believe and to hope that the truly redeemed will persevere until the end. But we believe we must recognize that there are manifold infirmities and temptations that we face. And we ought to watch and pray so that we don't make shipwreck of our faith the Lord's Day we observe the first day of the week for worship and observing the ordinance of God and serving Him and I believe that everybody ought to observe the Lord's Day and go to church not everybody does or will but that's the day that we observe the first day of the week What's the church? Well, this is a church. We are in a church. Those who are outside are a part of this church today. But if we go down the road, there's a little place called Easyville, and that's a church. If we go south, there's a place called Arnard. That's a church. If we go north, there's a place called Bethel. That's a church. If we... Go west to Purdy, there are several places that are churches. They are churches as well. The church is the local body like this, but there is a larger meaning for the church as well. The church universal, uh, the, the greater church, if you will, is composed of everybody who is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ whether they are in a valley in southwest Missouri or in the plains of darkest Africa, as long as they are children of God, they are a part of the church. And that's the church 
that Michael referenced a while ago where revival may begin. It could come from darkest China. It could come from Korea. It could start in Africa where perhaps some of our missionaries have carried the gospel in years past. Did you know that already there are foreign countries who are sending Christian missionaries to the United States? That seems so strange to us. When I first learned of that, this is, this is not part, this is a sidetrack, okay? I'll get back to my message in a minute. When I first heard of missionaries coming to the United States, I, I'll, I'll have to confess something to you. I was just a teeny little bit upset. I thought, they're, they're coming to tell us about Jesus. We've always gone to te tell them about Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit got a hold of me and chastised me a little bit and said, America needs missionaries. Maybe... Maybe, brethren, we need missionaries as bad or more than any country in the world. I, I don't know. That's just an aside, all right? Sanctification. What's sanctification? We believe it's a continuing growth as long as we're Christian. Well, I'm, let's see, I'm getting out. Okay, here, here's one. You'll be happy to hear about this. What is tithing? What do we think about tithing? Tithing is what we are supposed to return to the Lord from what he's given us, and it is one-tenth. I don't ask for that. God does. It is all he is. And if he, if he blesses us with a lot, we are expected to bring back a tenth of that lot. If he, exp it, uh, if he blesses us with a little, we are expected to bring back a tenth of that little. The tithe is a tenth. What about the ministry? Lee, you're sitting up there in front of us this morning. Why, why are you doing that? Well, it wasn't by choice, but God calls people. <laughs> he calls out men to, to preach the word to preach the gospel and administer the ordinances of the church and let me say this God calls the people out to preach that he chooses according to his wisdom and not ours have you have you ever heard Somebody say, well, oh, so-and-so was called to preach at church last night. And you think, what? <laughs> Ever do that? What? Do you know how ornery old so-and-so is? Paul murdered. God called him. Peter denied. God called him. God calls out whom he, chose, he chooses and he doesn't ask us to choose who will be his ministers. He knows and he calls them. What about the ordinances of the church? Most Protestant churches observe two ordinances. Communion. We observed communion last week. We observed communion at the Friday night service up at uh, Purdy at the Christian church a week ago Friday night. And by the way, did you notice how they opened it up to everybody from all the churches that was there? I was blessed by that. I appreciated that. I think that's the way it ought to be. I have been in places and in services where they had communion and they'd have the people of the church go off in a corner and do it secretly. Or they would 
make the announcement that this is for the brotherhood, meaning this is for the members of our church. And you visitors are welcome to be here, but don't take part. Ever been in a service like that? I've been in services like that. Cold feeling. Cold feeling when it ought to be a warm feeling. Another aside that doesn't maybe amount to a lot, but I want to tell you anyway, okay? On our second trip to the Holy Land at the, at the garden tomb, they had communion. And that's a special place to take communion. But the core group that sponsored the trip went away from all of us and took their communion and wouldn't, didn't want us there and didn't want, they did not want us taking communion with them and they did not want to take it with us. I believe it ought to be as, as it is here, open to every child of God that wants to take part. So, communion is one of the ordinances. Baptism is another, and we do that by immersion. And we have a third ordinance that we observe, and some other churches do as well. That's washing of the saints' feet. There are other denominations that do it. We're not alone, but there are not too many, perhaps. What about death? <laughs> All physical bodies die. But we believe that the soul lives on in joy or in sorrow, depending on our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. What about the second coming of Christ? Jesus came, as we said earlier, as a babe at Bethlehem, grew up and ministered, was crucified, buried, rose again, and ascended back to heaven with his Father. But he's coming again, and we believe that he will literally return to this earth and close this age and glorify his saints and judge the world. We think he's coming again. Thank you. The resurrection. Everybody will be resurrected. <laughs> Those who have done right will be resurrected to life and glory, and those who have done evil will be re resurrected to damnation. What about judgment and reward? What's the Lord going to do about that? Well, everybody will be judged according to his works. But his works will not determine his salvation or whether he spends eternity in heaven or hell. His works will determine his reward. He will be judged and the, the, the righteous will enter into eternal life and the wicked will enter into eternal damnation. And there may be some things I've left out, but I forgot them if I did, and you let me know, okay? Okay. Not a, not a happy hallelujah type message unless you stop and think about it that we can be redeemed for our, from our sins and that we can go to the place that Christ has gone to prepare for us and it will be heaven. God bless you. Anyone have a word? Anyone a question? Then I have a question for you. What do you believe? Let's stand together. Brother Mike Wilkes, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer, please? Father, we thank you for this service and for the message that we've heard. We pray that you'd take it and use it in our lives. Pray that you'd look down upon the needs that there are among us this morning, Father, those that have lost loved ones. Be with those families, Father, we pray, and lighten the burden that's going to be upon them because of the void in their life. Guide us in all that we do. Help us as your children, Father, to live in a way that would please you and to worship you and, and uh, try to win the loss to you, Father. We pray for our nation. We pray for all the needs that there are in the, amongst us, Father. Watch over our church. Continue to let it grow and to 
be what you'd have us to be here at Macedonia. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.